Hi everyone, welcome to this training video on using Vagrant. My name is Aaron Paxson, I blog at mytaneo.net and you can find me on Twitter as at Neelix. And for this video, we're gonna spend a few minutes uh, in learning what Vagrant does, starting Vagrant, and some tips and tricks down the road. So first off, what exactly is Vagrant? Well, if you've never heard of Vagrant before, you're probably thinking of some wanderer who has no home, who has no job, just kind of wanders around like a vagabond and doesn't really have anything to do. And that's not exactly what we're talking about today. We're talking about Vagrant as it pertains to virtual machines and virtual machine creation. The way I see Vagrant is more like a virtual machine controller. Uh, it doesn't manage the virtual machines. It doesn't do end-to-end -end management, but what it does do is it can actually spin up virtual machines in a pre-configured format. It can provision them automatically and then destroy them when they're done. So it's really more of a controller than it is anything else. A little bit of history is that Vagrant really kind of started out as a side project by Mitchell Hashimoto. Uh, that was back in 2010. Two years later, HashiCorp actually saw some really good benefits with that and started dedicating full-time development to Vagrant. And fast forward another two to three years, that's where we're at today with Vagrant as we use it. So why on earth would we want to use Vagrant? Uh, for me personally, and for a lot of other people, it's really helpful when we're building labs. Uh, it, when we're building labs, we need to have pre-configured servers so that we can do the something with them. And a lot of times, up till now, we've been spending a lot of time in building those servers before we can do anything with them. So using Vagrant, we can actually go ahead and define what exactly we want, how we want them provisioned, what the network should look like, and let Vagrant start everything up so that we can get right into labbing really quickly. Another reason is for testing. Uh, if you do a lot of code development, a lot of code testing, uh, this is really useful because now you can have predefined servers, let's say a web server and a database server and maybe an application server in the middle, uh, such as Django or maybe a WebSphere system or something like that, where now it can create all of those servers instantly with the right IP addresses and the databases and everything. And then you, it, will, it can also deploy your code so you can go right into testing. You don't have to really spend a huge amount of time in building the environment. And because that it's a vagrant file is a text file, a configuration file, you can put that configuration file in with your code in the repository and let it do version control for it. So the next time somebody pulls down your code, they will also get that vagrant configuration and then they can start up their infrastructure and do testing themselves using that same infrastructure. It's also very diverse. Uh, Vagrant can run on Mac, it can run on Linux, it can run on Windows. Uh, and it's also very diverse in the providers that it can manage. It can actually spin up virtual machines in Parallels, VirtualBox, VMware, AWS. Uh, I believe that there's even some other ones out there like uh, DigitalOcean or Rackspace. So it's really diverse. You can really use it in all kinds of environments. Also, we can do provisioning. I <laughs> forgot about that part. So it's actually built-in provisioning. You can actually have it, once it spins up a virtual machine, it can go ahead and kick off some provisioning aspects of it. Whether you're using Ansible, Chef, or Puppet, you can actually call those provisioning systems to start configuring the servers inside. So maybe you're spinning up a CentOS box or a Ubuntu box and you want to install web, you want to install Apache, you want to install maybe Ingen, Nginx or something, uh, deploy configuration codes and, and maybe install a database server and put in databases and tables and data. So it can actually start provisioning those boxes so you can get right into your testing. So for the demo today, we're actually going to be starting up a virtual machine using Ansible. And then at the end, we're actually going to show you how to use Vagrant to spin up more than one VM and how to configure the networking. So let's get started with the demo. Okay, now we're at our demo. You can see here that I've just got a directory that I'm looking at here, and it's an empty directory. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to type in Vagrant init. And what that's going to do is it's actually going to create a bare minimum Vagrant file or configuration file for Vagrant. Now I wanna do it one step further. I'm gonna do a Vagrant init, but I'm actually going to tell it what kind of image I want. And the image that I'm wanting is actually hand-sewed slash CentOS dash 6.5 dash x86 underscore 64. Now when I do that, you can see here that all that did was just create a Vagrant file configuration. So if I pull it up in our, my text editor here, and yeah, let's say reload, you can see here that all it is is it's just a Ruby configuration saying configure, this is the virtual machine box that I want, and then at the very end, it's, it ends it down here. Everything in between is just commented out code. You can actually use, uh, look at all this 
commented code and see what kind of parameters you can put in here. This isn't everything, but it is uh, a considerable amount. So now what we want to do is we want to say vagrant up. Now that we have that vagrant file in there, doing a vagrant up is actually going to spin up the virtual machine. Now, while this is working, so what's happening is that it's saying, oh, well, I don't have that on my machine. Let me see if I can find it. And then it starts downloading the virtual machine. You may be wondering, how did I even get this image file out there? I mean, I, I guess I could have come up and just created it out of the top of my head, but probably not very likely. What we want to do is we want to go to a browser and we're going to type in vagrant, if I can spell, I still can't spell, vagrant cloud.com. What that's going to do is it's going to forward you to HashiCorp's Atlas. And Atlas is really just a repository for vagrant boxes. Here's where you can do all kinds of searching. You can do it by uh, provider filters. I can do it for VirtualBox, VMware, DigitalOcean, Rackspace, Parallels. I can also do a search. Let's say I want to do for anything with CentOS. So, or CentOS. With CentOS, it's telling me everything with Chef, Puppet, there's the uh, image that I'm downloading. So that's actually how you can identify what images are out there. You can also create your own, but this is a really quick way of being able to download and find images for you to download. Going back over here, you can see here that I've got a blazingly fast internet speed and I'm still only 25%. So due to the magic of video editing, we're gonna go ahead and speed this up. And now it has successfully downloaded the image box. Now it's actually going to be spinning it up inside a virtual box. And now it's spun up and ready to be used. We can verify this by going to VBox Manage List. And VBox Manage is a virtual box command line. You may not have this uh, for Parallels or Virtual Machine or uh, VMware, but through Virtual Box, we're doing VBox Manage List running VMs. And there it is. Now it's actually running this virtual machine. I can test that by going into doing a vagrant SSH and using private keys and the username of vagrant, I'm now in my, uh, my Unix box or Linux box actually. So let's exit out of here. Now there's a couple things we can do uh, to shut it down. We're gonna say vagrant and we could say suspend. And what that will do is it'll save the system state and shut it down. We can just shut it down and power it off by doing a vagrant halt. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say vagrant destroy, not destroy, destroy. And what that's going to do is it's actually just going to completely wipe out the virtual machine. It still has the image downloaded in my repository, so I can always bring it up again, but it's going to be brought up again from the baseline image versus what I've actually been using in my system state. And we want to destroy it. Yes. Forcing the shutdown and now it's gone. If I were to look back at my running VMs again, nothing's there. So that's basically the initial startup of using Vagrant to download an image and spin it up quickly. Now, the next thing that I wanted to show you is how to spin up multiple virtual machines. You may be doing uh, any, some kind of testing or code deployment, and you may need to do it against multiple servers. Let's say a, a two-tier application that has a web server and a database server. So maybe you want Vagrant to spin up two virtual machines. So I'm gonna go into my other directory and here I've already got a Vagrant file. Let's take a look at it. Now this one, you can see that I've already removed out all the commented code and it really is doing two things. I've got two virtual machines defined here. I've got one that's being called web. I'm using this image for Ubuntu. I'm setting the host name inside of the server. I'm creating a forwarded port because this is a web server. I'm gonna be installing web on it and it's gonna be running HTTP on port 80 but I may already have multiple machines running port 80. So I'm doing some port forwarding here so that 8080 will go into that server. I'm also setting a private network and setting the IP address inside the server as well. Now here's something that's really interesting that you could look at. Uh, I'm a Nansible guy, so I want to, you know, maybe I want to use Ansible to automatically provision the server when it boots up. Remember, it's a web server, so maybe I want it to install HTTPD or Apache, and maybe I want to install a configuration file for all my virtual hosts and then set up uh, some kind of HTML files or download my code to deploy it into this. So when it boots up, it can actually kick off this provisioning uh, playbook, web-playbook.yaml, and it will actually start installing and provisioning things. So as I booted up all those virtual machines, I could just walk away, have a cup of coffee, come back, and then everything is ready to go as I need it to be. Now. 
To make it a little bit simpler and easier, I am not going to be doing the provisioning, but you can see how that's done. The second virtual machine is called DB. I'm using the same image and I'm also setting the host name to be DB as well. So let's go ahead and start up this Vagrant file, which is going to be just Vagrant up. And it's going to be bringing up two machines, one called web and one called DB. Okay, now both the web and the DB virtual machines have been started. We can verify that by doing a VBox manage list running VMs. And now I have two VMs, one for web and one for DB. Now you may be asking yourself, well, how do I connect to it? Well, there's a couple of ways. Uh, the first one is that you can tell that when it boots up, it automatically starts doing port forwarding to port 22. So DB is on port 2200 for SSH. If I scroll up to web, you can see that port 2222 has been assigned to SSH on this server. But it's a little bit easier than that. We can actually just say Vagrant SSH and then put in the name of the virtual machine that we created. So I did one for web. And here's where it's going to connect into the SSH. You can see here that I've got the host name set for web. And then I can also do for DB as well. And there we go. I hope that uh, this was informative for you. Thanks.